chapter four, the role of a counselor to a buyer client or a seller client. As a real estate counselor for a buyer client or your seller client, you're going to be their guide throughout the entire process. During this process of buying and selling a home, you're going to have a myriad of important tasks that make sure that this process goes smoothly. So let's cover some of those. The first one as a counselor is going to be the needs assessment. Now for a buyer, as their counselor, you're going to start by conducting a thorough needs assessment so that you can understand the client's preferences, their budget, their location, and anything that is specific to that client's property that they're going to need. Now, here's a helpful hint that I teach my agents. When I'm doing this, one of the things I ask my buyer to do is take a piece of paper, draw a line down the center, and on one side put must-haves and on the other side put wants so that you can get a thorough list of their must-haves, like must-have three bedrooms, must-have two baths, must-have two-car two garage. And then on the other side are the wants. Now, don't tell them this, but I always look at the wants like throwaways, <laughs> okay? Want, I want a pool. I want uh, 10 acres. I want a horse barn. And I call those throwaways because now you've got a list so that when you go out and search the MLS, you can put all the list of must-haves and the list of wants in your search parameters and bingo, you get two houses. If you don't get any houses, then you can start slowly removing the wants, which is why I call them the throwaway. I don't call them that out loud to the client. So you could say, okay, we got rid of the 10 acres and I found everything else on two acres, would that be sufficient, all right? Now, for the seller as their counselor, you're going to assess their goals. What's their timeline? Are there any other important issues? So uh, that way you can evaluate their property on the market and discuss the strategies that's going to fit their goals so that they can maximize the appeal of that property to a potential buyer. Now, remember, a lot of agents tend to think that your job is to get the highest price for the seller. That's not true. All right. Let me repeat that in case you didn't hear it. Getting the highest price is not true. Getting the best deal is the important thing because there could be other issues for the seller that may be more important than money. I had an agent once that just could not get over the fact that his seller took an offer $10,000 less, but it was cash closed in 10 days versus a VA loan that was at that time they had asked for 45 days. And he just couldn't get over the fact that they were leaving money on the table. And I kept trying to explain to him. You know, you've got to understand that if time is their important factor, they needed to be in another state so their husband could start this job and the kids could start school. Time outbalanced that actual money. So keep that in mind as a counselor. Understand what their needs are. Um, the second thing is market education. You're going to educate your client about the current real estate market, the current condition. What are the trends? What are the comparable property values? This is going to help your clients make informed offers and in help your seller clients and make or set a realistic listing price. Number three, financing or guidance on financing. As a buyer's counselor, you will provide guidance on financing options, mainly connecting them with other mortgage professionals and explaining the mortgage process. This will ensure that the buyer understands their financial capability and they are prepared for this journey to buy and close on this property. From the seller standpoint, you might offer insights on how some of the property improvements can impact the market value so that you can advise them on pricing strategies that will attract the right buyers they're looking for. 
when it comes to property searches or property listings, as the buyer's counselor, you're going to help identify the suitable properties based on that list we just talked about. You're going to be scheduling viewings. You're going to be evaluating all of these options for that uh, buyer client. When it comes to the sellers, you need to collaborate with the sellers to prepare and list their property. This is going to involve marketing materials, coordinating showing, uh, implementing strategies that it's going to enhance their property's visibility. Maybe it's going to be a social market campaign. Maybe you're going to build a website dedicated directly to that one property. Um, all of these things are going to be part of your job. Point number five, negotiation strategies. As a counselor, you're going to guide your client through the negotiation process. For buyers, that involves formulating competitive offers. And for sellers, it includes reviewing and responding to offers. Now, remember, you have to help the client make sure they stay aligned with their original objectives. This happens a lot with buyers where buyers are like, oh, I want to see this house and it's three bedrooms, two baths, 1500 square feet. And then all of a sudden they start sending you homes. Oh, I saw this. I want to go look at it. And it's, you know, seven bedrooms, 12,000 square feet. You've got to talk to your buyers about, uh, hey, that was not part of our original objectives. Have our objective objectives changed or did I miss something along the way? Same thing with sellers. When you get offers in that says, you know, hey, my client wants to rent the property and you still are obligated to submit that offer, you might want to bring that to the client's attention. Hey, you understand that we talked about uh, a sale. This is a rental contract or a rental offer. So you may have to talk to your clients about redoing objectives if they have changed and during this process is usually when they find out, mainly on the buyer side, is when you see this issue pop up where they, oh, yeah, new house. So keep that in mind. Another one of the things is the transaction coordinator. As a counselor, you're going to guide and help your client through all facets of this transaction, including coordinating with other professionals, such as the home inspector, the appraiser any repair people that need to come and fix anything, title companies, and there are probably more. You are going to help ensure that all the deadlines are met and that all of the aspects of this transaction go smoothly. That's going to be a key component in being a counselor for your client. Now, we all know, number seven, that real estate transactions always have hair on the deal, right? There's always a challenge that's going to pop up. Um, I, I hate to use the word problem because I don't want you to look at it like a problem. It's a challenge. <laughs> As the counselor, you're going to play a crucial role in problem solving. This involves addressing issues, mitigating risks, finding solutions. You need to make sure those solutions actually align with the client's interests. Remember, keep that in mind. Number eight, legal and contractual guidance. Now, I want to hesitate here a little bit and make sure you understand that while we have some uh, responsibility in the contractual paperwork, unless you are a practicing attorney, you are not a practicing attorney. So one of your goals here as a counselor could simply be to seek out a legal professional if this deal has a lot of hair on it. You're going to advise your client on the clear understanding of their obligations, of the terms as you know them, and any potential ramifications that could happen if they don't follow the contract, all right? Now, once this deal's closed, we actually could still have some post-transaction support, right? For the buyer, it may involve uh, us helping them or recommending some other service providers. For the sellers, you may actually take on a second role as a counselor for them while they're transitioning to their next property. 
maybe you're going to be their buyer on the next deal. So keep that in mind as a counselor, you might have a little bit of post-transaction support. Number 10 is building the long-term relationship. And I think most of you out there are shaking your heads and you understand that, that ultimately as the counselor, your goal is to build that trust bridge that we have discussed before. This is going to help you establish a long-term relationship with that client. And its studies have shown that satisfied clients are more likely to return to you in the future and more likely to recommend you to their family and friends. So remember that as a real estate counselor, you serve as the trusted advisor, guiding the client through the entire process, using your expertise, using transparency, and making sure that you have a strong commitment to achieving your client's goals. This is what we call that client-centric approach and it is the foundation to building a successful and real estate career and experience for each client.